Hello guys and welcome to my FIFA 13 career. Um, I know it's quite late, it's really, it's the end of June, so why would I be starting a FIFA career now? Well, I've, I've got quite a bit of free time at the moment and I quite fancy playing some FIFA and getting my teeth into something, so nothing better to do that with than a good old career mode. Uh, I'm choosing to be Everton for this career. I thought about maybe being one of the top teams but I figured that that wouldn't be enough of a challenge and I wanted to have a career where I could you know I wouldn't walk it say with a Man U or Man City or Chelsea but I wanted it to be a bit of a challenge with the aim of winning the league in a couple of seasons and hopefully qualifying for Europe as well I've just went through my career settings um, I am playing on Legendary for this series and you'll see that before every game I'll put up the pre-match menu to show you that. Uh, so let's get straight into it. This was the first thing I did. Uh, I went to the squad report just to see the strength of the team and think about where I could possibly improve in the transfer window. And the two places that um, struck me as needing work were the defence and the midfield. Uh, in defence, uh, Everton have got uh, Jagielka, who's decent, I'm happy with him. Distan, Sylvan Distan there doesn't quite cut it for me alongside him. And also Tony Hibbert at right back isn't great. But we have got um, Heitinger as well at centre back, who's pretty good. But I thought I'd strengthen the side by looking at some centre backs. So here I'm going to inquire about Gary Cahill from Chelsea because he's, you know, pretty decent, rated 79 and he's 26, so could get a good few years out of him. And also Nicholas Lombert from Zenit, uh, similar to Cahill, 27 years old and rated 79. And they're both about £6 million, and I've got a transfer budget of 7.5. And, and then in the midfield, because Phil Neville plays central midfield for Everton, and ideally I'd want someone a bit better than that. So here I'm looking at Javi Garcia from... Manchester City and Miguel Veloso and also optimistic but inquiring about Johan Kabay as well. Ideally I'd like to get a defender and a midfielder which means that I'm going to have to create some money to add to that budget. So I looked at selling some players or putting some players on the transfer list. Uh, none of the really established players who are in the starting lineup. I was looking mainly at the youngsters who I don't think are quite going to cut it, um, are going to be at the level that I want for this team. So that includes Velios there and this guy, Ross Barkley. I know he's only 18 and he's rated 70, so he's got potential, but I think we need the money more from a transfer than for waiting to him to get become you know a good player. And then there are a few others who you know, are about 20 or 19 and are only rated in the 60s, so I thought that's not going to work out and put them up on the transfer list, although some of them have only, have only just joined, so you can't actually put them on the transfer list. I was looking at putting this guy, um, Naismith, on the transfer list, but I couldn't because he's only just joined, which I just thought was a bit strange that that Everton just bought him considering he's not really that special a player. But hey, there you go. They haven't got a lot of money, so... Um, yeah, there's a few more here that I put on the transfer list. I think there's about seven or eight players in total. Uh, all of them quite young, and each of these probably the oldest out of them at 24, who I put on. And then there's that guy who's 18 years old and only rated 50, but... I couldn't actually put him on, I don't think. Yeah, because he's recently joined, so I couldn't actually put him on the transfer list, even though he's really not at the level required, I don't think. I won't be making much use of him. So yeah, I've put a number of guys up there on the transfer list, and this is uh, my message from the board about my objectives for the season, which is to qualify for the Euro League. I'm aiming a bit higher than that. I'd like to get into the Champions League uh, domestic cup. They want to reach the final. 
And then I get some responses to my inquiries. Miguel Veloso, they want 9 million. And then Lombert, Lombert's 6.5 and, and Gary Cahill, 7. And I was a bit torn between uh, Lombert's and Cahill as to who I was going to pick for that centre-back role. And they were both asking similar amounts of money, which I was quite happy to pay for one of them. So I went to my shortlist and had a look at their stats again, as you'll see in a moment. And it turns out that Lombert's is quite a bit slower than Gary Cahill. So I decided to go f for Cahill in that centre-back role, who I quite like as a player anyway on FIFA. He's fairly decent. And then I got a response about Kabay and Garcia. And Man City said they weren't prepared to sell Garcia, which was fair enough. And Kabay, they wanted 11 million, which I obviously can't pay. So I think at the moment, I'm quite happy to get Gary, Gary Cahill. And I'll have to make do with the midfield for now. But it's it's okay, that midfield. I, I mean, Phil Neville's been around a while. So I, I'll give him a chance and see how he gets on in the first few games. And here we just see Chelsea accepted my offer. So now I'm offering Gary Cahill a contract. And for the squad role, I chose important first team player because he wasn't going to be a crucial one. He's not the first name on the team sheet, but he will start quite a few games, I reckon. And then I got an offer for Ross Barkley. Uh, 2.4 million from Norwich, he's valued at 2.5, so I just thought I'd counter off of that with 2.7 million, which I think is worth doing, especially with younger players, because, you know, they've, they're young, they've got potential. They, You can generally get a little bit more than what the value is, but I didn't want to put it up too much to the point where they, Norwich weren't going to put in another offer, and there you can see they decide to match that offer of 2.7 million pounds. And that deal goes through, so we get an extra two million for the transfer budget, which on its own isn't enough, really, to put in an offer for a midfielder. But we'll get there. Uh, you just saw there I had a message saying that Gary Cahill injured himself in a friendly and was out for four weeks, which would ultimately put him out of my first competitive match in charge, which was the one we're about to see, which was at home to Man United. And I knew this was going to be a tough game because obviously Man United have got some really good players. Uh, just there confirming that I'm playing it on Legendary. Playing Jaggy Elker and Heitinger at, at centre-back and Hibbert at right-back. Because by this point Cahill was... Um, he recovered from his injury, but he was he still had the little plaster next to him in the squad selection, which means that he's not quite fit. So I didn't want to risk him. And we go into this first game against Manchester United and I knew this was going to be such a tough game because Man U have got you know Rooney and Van Persie who don't need much space in and around the box to get off a decent shot and normally score as you see here from these clips of the first half I don't deal with this properly and there's Van Persie getting a shot in from the edge of the box and that was a good save from Tim Howard he's a really good keeper on this game I rate him highly certainly a good man to have for Everton. That is Mats Hummels who Manchester United bought off Borussia Dortmund and yeah you could just see from the stats there in the first half I only had one shot compared to United's seven and then Van Persie gets away again here, cuts back, Kagawa gives it to Nani and he's only got a little bit of space but that's enough for him to find the corner and that was a real blow because I'd been battling hard to that point to try and keep it level and you know I think it wasn't beyond expectations that we could have got a draw from this game but that was a big blow and we really weren't getting that many chances this was probably the best chance we had up to this point in the game for Morales and it was blocked so that just shows the level of dominance that United had this was a really good chance here Valencia giving it away to Stephen Pienaar and Morales getting the shot but it was a good save from Lindegaard I made a couple of changes to try and change things in the game and went a bit more on the offensive which meant that there were more gaps at the back for United to exploit and Nani scored again which is hard to comprehend considering what he is like in real life but yeah he scored two here and that put them 2 nil up and then I got a little bit frustrated and this was pretty poor from me this goal 
Nani squaring it to Van Persie and making it three. So in the end, it was a fairly comfortable margin of victory for Manchester United. Disappointing in the first game to lose. Because I remember in the actual Premier League last year, in this fixture, Everton actually won 1-0. Well, but we weren't able to repeat that one here. And that put pr pressure on us in our next game to get a result. And it's away from home as well against Aston Villa, who I think got a draw in their first match of the season. So, yeah, pressure on here to win this game, or at least get a draw. Um, but the good news is that Gary Cahill is, well, he's not actually, his condition hasn't really improved, but I decided to play him. I think he should be fine by now, and that's just strengthen that back line, I think, a bit, to have four really, you know, good quality players in there, because I think Hibbert is a bit of a weak point. Um, so yeah, that's the starting lineup for this game. And then again, you can see, playing on Legendary, just in case anyone doesn't believe me. Uh, Villa on here, I think, I think, are a bit better than they are, than they have been this season in the actual well, Premier League. Because on paper, they've got you know good players, good attacking players, especially Darren Bent and Agbon Lahore. And then. 25 minutes into this game it's a bad start again Bannon giving Villa the lead and after losing 3-0 to Man U and now this happening I was starting to think mm, have I bitten off a little more than I can chew with this because it wasn't looking great I mean I don't know what I was doing there with Cahill just running away from the man but there you go but you know we fought back and this is a good little move here Fellaini putting it through to Darren Gibson who has his shot saved but Fellaini's there with the rebound and that's my first goal for Fellaini and that levelled it at 1-1 going into half time and that was a relief to get the first goal away and then Fellaini there with a simple finish on the rebound and then going into the second half is Agbon Lahore making a nuisance of himself and this was frustrating because we just couldn't get this away and then it bounced nicely for El Amadi, who had a quite simple finish to give Villa the lead again. And this that was frustrating because we'd worked so hard to get back into the game and level it up. And it felt like, right, we can go on from here and get the result, but that was frustrating to concede then. But again, we fought back. I wasn't prepared to lose this game. And this was a good chance for Morales, but a good save from... Shea Given in the goal so it just felt like things weren't really going our way in this game and then out of nothing I mean the referee has given us a penalty there I have no idea what it was for but I'll take it and um, Morales taking the penalty and he puts it away nicely to level it up at 2-2 with 20 minutes to go so this was turning into a, a really good match, actually. wasn't expecting this to be such a tight and, well, such an exciting contest. And just see a couple of replays of the nice penalty there from Morales. No chance for the goalkeeper. And then with just five minutes left, Morales to Phil Neville. What's he doing there? And what's he doing playing a ball like that? That was a great ball from uh, Phil Neville. And what a finish as well for Morales. Four minutes left and we take the lead 3-2. But, you know, that's just... I mean, that's not in Phil Neville's game, a ball like that. It was a beautiful through ball. And Morales with the pace to get away from Dunn. And a lovely finish. And that's how it finished. So, two games in, we've won one and lost one. Um, not a bad start considering that the loss was against Menu. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Part 2 will be out soon and I hope to see you there.